So the month of January is just about over. That means it's time for the first haul of 2022. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your January pickups. What did you get this month? What movies, what toys, what fun, interesting books did you get? I'd love to hear about it. And if you're kind of new to these videos, they're intentionally a little bit more laid back. They're intentionally shot in a manner to let my personality come out a bit more. With that said, let's get started. First up, we've got Captain America 1990 on Blu-ray. Now, this movie is infamous for being one of the worst comic book movies of all time. For me, it's just the Marvel movie that I grew up watching. Because there weren't very many. <laughs> like, at the point in time when I was growing up, there was Howard the Duck... There's Punisher, and there was this one. And this is the one that I'd recorded off of television. I got it off, like, HBO or something. I don't even remember how I got it, because we didn't have HBO at the time. But I recorded it off cable. Maybe it was happened to play on free HBO weekend or something. And so I had this recorded on a, a VHS tape. And, you know, it's... You don't know what's good or bad when you're young, so I didn't know how bad it was at the time. And so I have so much nostalgia for this movie. I've seen it probably 30 times because I just watched it a lot when I was growing up. And so it's a movie that most people hate, but I have very fond memories of this movie and I think it's probably overhated just a little bit. As By today's standards, it's definitely not good, but it's not as bad as people trash it considering it's 30 years old and the budget that it's had, the time, all that fun stuff. But So this is one of these uh, Shout Factory versions. So they have like uh, interviews with the director and the star and some other fun stuff. So I, I watched through the movie when I was going to sleep one night, but I haven't watched the special features, which I am interested to check out what they, they have to say about all of that. Next up, we've got Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Uh, this franchise is actually very popular in my household. Uh, my, my kids love Venom. <laughs> Maybe that's a bad thing, but you know, it's just he's a little bit more interesting to them because he's you know he's kind of a bad guy, but kind of a good guy. He's kind of like Spider Man. So Venom is very popular in my household, and the surprising one is that my wife actually likes these movies. I, right before this one came out, when she was out of town, I was like, I was like, okay, let's watch Venom while your mom's out of town. She got back to town. We're like, we watched Venom. She's like, what? You watched it without me? Which was not the response I was expecting. I did not think that she was going to be as into the Venom movies as she turned out to be. And so, um, yeah, I had to pick this one up. And I, I enjoyed it more than a lot of people. I mean, it's a, it's definitely a B movie. It's a comic book B movie. It has no pretenses or ambitions of being the greatest comic book movie of all time. It just wants to be a fun roller coaster. That's what Andy Serkis described as like, yeah, we just want to give people a fun time. If you go to the movies, just want to put a big grin on your face for 90 minutes. And, and I think that they did that. Uh, it has its faults. It has flaws in what they did with it, but but it was a lot of fun. Then we have Crime Wave. If you're not familiar with Crime Wave, that's because nobody talks about this movie. And I, I've never seen it before. And I've, I watched it for the first time after buying it. So it's, just, it's Sam Raimi's second movie. And it was written by the Coen brothers. So it's this strange anomaly of an A-list director with these A-list writers. And they did a movie together that doesn't get a lot of buzz because it's it's super weird. It's a very strange movie. It's very slapstick with this kind of like stake, mistaken identity plot line about two assassins trying to kill someone and this guy getting wrapped up into it. And it's very much goofy Sam Raimi. And so um, it's it's tough to even describe it because it's not like anything. It there's, takes inspiration from many things, but it's not like any one thing that I can point you towards. And, um, you know, you can look at the back of it and there's like a guy making a goofy face while about to be electrocuted. That's the nature of this film. It is very oddball, very quirky. Anyway, Sam Raimi's got a new movie coming out in May. You might have heard about it, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So I'm watching through all of Sam Raimi's movies, going to do a Sam Raimi ranking when the time comes. But uh, this is the, one of the Sam Raimi movies I'd never seen before. So I picked this one up to check it out. Next up, this one is a, a case of bad timing and a little bit of a sense, but uh, so in my fan mail, I actually got someone sent me a copy of The Punisher on Blu-ray, but I'd already pre-ordered the new 4K Steelbook jumbo edition of it. And so it, I went from going all these years without a Blu-ray of The Punisher to having two different copies of it on Blu-ray in the span of just a couple of days. But anyway, they released a brand new 
4K steelbook at Best Buy for the Thomas Jane 2004 Punisher movie with uh, you know a ton of the special features, all of the behind the scenes documentaries. It's a movie with uh, extensive deleted scenes, and so you got all the extensive deleted scenes. I don't think the actual director's cut is on here, which is just mind blowing to me. If you don't know what I'm talking about. There's a director's cut of this movie that runs about 20 minutes longer, and there's also these, they did a, and a, a cinematic for, the, there's a cut intro sequence that kind of set the whole movie in motion that showed Frank Castle as the soldier prior to the events of the story and establishing his relationship with his um, military buddies, a guy that plays into the plot line, especially in the director's cut, and they did all this stuff, and that stuff's not on most of the Blu-rays and DVDs, but they released back in like 2008, 2007, the director's cut. And I, and I had that version of it, but it got stolen. My house got robbed. We were robbed um, one week shy of our one year anniversary. So 14 years ago, we got robbed and I had dozens and dozens, maybe a hundred DVDs stolen from me, including that one. And, um, but it, it was like a, a more involved version of the story with more plot details, uh, more betrayal, explanations as to certain information as to how John Travolta was able to do everything or how Howard State was able to do everything he did in it. And so I don't think this one actually has the director's cut, which is which is baffling. Why you would have it, it exists, and they just haven't put it out on Blu-ray, as best I can tell. But this is the best version of the movie that you can buy at the moment, as far as I'm aware of. So um, wanted to pick this one up because I didn't have it. Unfortunately, I did receive a copy in my fan mail, so that timing of that didn't work out the best. Then we have Dark Man. This was Sam Raimi's first superhero movie and an original character that he came up with that, um, yeah, so back 30 years ago now, they he created his own little... Um, oh, I, I forgot to mention them. Much like Captain America, this is also Shout Factory. So it has a bunch of kind of unique special features that they did with it. I haven't checked any of them out. But uh, this is also Shout Factory, and this is Shout Factory. That's why I brought it back up. Three of these movies I got are Shout Factory. If you don't know, Shout Factory kind of pulls out some like older cult classic type movies and they give real nice blu-ray releases to them and they they'll do like legitimate research to try and take these cult classics and give you the best blu-ray experience that you can so like uh, last year they came out with a new version of halloween 6 where they dug into the archives at the studio to find some lost excuse me it was halloween 5 they did this they, they released a bunch of a bunch of them but halloween 5 is what i'm talking about uh, halloween 5 and they dug through the archives to find lost footage of this intro that they originally had and so all this footage that has never been seen before, they're able to see it because of Shout Factory. That is a little bit of a rabbit trail, but this is another Shout Factory release for Dark Band, which um, Sam Raimi comes up with his own superhero 30 years ago, and it stars one Liam Neeson. So Liam Neeson as a superhero in an original story from Sam Raimi, and as a little, little anecdote from my childhood, as much as I cover horror movies and can watch very violent movies, in real life, I have a very squeamish side. Like, I've passed out because I've seen someone get a nosebleed and I passed out. Um, I've passed out multiple times when I've had my blood drawn. And I, I passed out quite a bit when I was in elementary, middle school over anything that, like, triggered. It was like a panic attack and I'd pass out. And the trailer for Dark Man did that for me when I was 10 years old, however old, 9 years old, whatever. I saw a trailer for it and there's a part where they're like, pulling a mask off someone and I'd recently seen a special on plastic surgery that just freaked me out and caused me to pass out when that happened too. And so when I saw the dark man trailer and show someone taking a mask off, it triggered that part of my brain about like the plastic surgery. I went into like this loop and I, I like passed out from watching the trailer for this movie, which it, it's just strange to think about um, uh, those little experiences. But now you know a little bit more about me and, um, that I've passed out multiple times from that. But so anyway, this is one, I, I haven't seen it in like five years or something like that. So I'm interested to see my take on Dark Man after all this time. Next up, we've got Cloverfield, Matt Reeves' film from oh, several years back. That's what people forget that because uh, Cloverfield became kind of its own brand and they did 10 Cloverfield Lane and then they did Cloverfield Paradox. So people remember the Cloverfield brand, but J.J. Abrams was kind of more the famous name associated when this one first came out because of Bad Robot and things like that. So they used maybe his name a little bit more. And not that people thought that J.J. directed it, but he's a little bit more the face. Jump forward, Matt Reeves is about to do the Batman and he's done all these like great interviews that have kind of made him this very prominent, well-known, praised guy because of his Dawn of the Planet of the Apes movies. 
But go back in time. He's the guy that directed Cloverfield. And so it's a found footage, basically Godzilla movie about these people trying to survive the city being destroyed by this big gigantic monster. And so it holds off on showing the monster. And so I would say one of the better found footage movies. Um, I think it's a solid little film. Matt Reeves has a movie coming out in about a month. So I'm watching through all his movies. Maybe a ranking's coming related to that. So I picked this one up. Final one on here, it's an actually a DVD. I don't normally buy DVDs because it's antiquated technology, but certain movies are not available on Blu-ray, including Excessive Force, a movie I'd never seen before. And it stars Thomas Ian Griffith. If you see the cover, you probably don't pick up on it. But if you're a Cobra Kai fan, that is Terry Silver himself. He almost had a, a leading man martial arts career, but it just never took off. Like maybe it was a little bit too late. Maybe the project was just wrong. But so he got his own little martial arts vehicle action thriller back in the early mid 90s. And it, it just didn't do great. And I was aware the movie existed. I just never seen it. So finally wanted to check it out after watching Cobra Kai season four. I was like, wait, I know this guy's got an action throughout. I need to check it out. Here, here's the cast for this movie. So he stars in it and he wrote it. Then you have Lance Henriksen, James Earl Jones, Tony Todd, Candyman, and Burt Young, Polly from Rocky. The supporting cast on this movie is like crazy good, especially for a movie that like went absolutely nowhere. But that, so it's a, it's a, Fairly typical early 90s action thriller. It's a little bit more in the vein of Steven Seagal movies. And what I mean by that is more plot wise of kind of like this cop that plays by his own rules and has a special set of skills. It's that type of movie that's kind of Seagal did a lot of those, whereas Van Damme did more kind of tournament fighters. It was kind of what he was more famous for. So it's, it's a little bit more in the Seagal fashion, but he does Taekwondo. So his fighting style is probably more reminiscent of uh, Van Damme. But so anyway, um, you know, if you like those kind of things, it's a, it's an enjoyable watch. If you're a big fan of 80s, 90s action thrillers, especially martial arts films, it's worth watching. If that's not your thing, if you're not like me, a big action movie guy, you can sit this one out. It's not going to give you anything new or interesting. And just a couple more things to talk about. We've got a Funko for Phoebe from Ghostbusters Afterlife, the character that stole the movie from Paul Rudd. Um... Uh, McKenna Grace, uh, she she is a very talented young lady. Uh, she could do dramatic scenes. She can be funny. And then during the credits, she sang the credit song for this movie. So I think she's like stole the whole film, which is quite impressive given that she's playing against Paul Rudd. But anyway, wanted to pick one of those up. And it actually, I bought it back in November, but it only just released about a week ago. Final one on here. This is pretty cool. It's actually a book. I don't normally talk about books on here, but this is a book worth talking about. And it is a jumbo-sized mammoth volume. The Story of Marvel Studios. This is the official two-volume history of Marvel Studios. And so I, I, I obviously cover Marvel quite a bit on my channel and have grown my channel based off them. So when I heard about this book, I knew I had to check it out. So what I decided to do is, is read this book while I do this year's watch through of all the movies. And so as of right now, I've read all of the pre, I'm like a mid Iron Man is where it's at in production in the history. They haven't, the movie hasn't come out yet because I, I haven't rewatched Iron Man yet. Then once I rewatch Iron Man, I'm going to read all of that behind the scenes of the making of Iron Man. But it is just so detailed, so many detail uh, uh, descriptions of exactly what took place behind the scenes, stories that stuff I never heard about, about the writing of Iron Man, the casting in some of these ones, just really, really cool stuff with hundreds of interviews with the actual directors, the actual stars of the MCU, and of course, Kevin Feige himself. So if you are a massive fan of the MCU, which is pretty likely if you're subscribed to my channel, this is the definitive history. This is like a must read. It's not cheap, but it is worth the read. It, like you get what you pay for with, I mean, it's even, you can use it as a piece of exercising equipment. It is quite heavy, but uh, if you're interested in this one, I'll put a link down below in the description for where you can check it out, but it's the definitive history. It's it's amazing. Uh, I do recommend it, but uh, it is it is dense. I mean, it's hundreds of pages of, of just, every detail imaginable, behind the scenes pictures and everything. So something like 150,000 words telling the history of the MCU. Whoo, it is a long one. Anyway, there you have it. 
picked up some fun, cool movies with a bunch of cool behind the scenes stuff, uh, picked up an amazing volume on the MCU. Let me know what you got down below. Keep talking movies and TV too much.